Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm Angela with the God's Heritage International Ministry. And today's message is going to be on broken hearts. Because we're doing the series currently of where is your heart or what's in your heart. And today we're going to be talking about broken hearts. So my message today is God is our ultimate cardiologist. So let's open in prayer. Father God, I thank you so much for our brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you for all of our viewers that are joining us today. Please give us all ears to hear and eyes to see, Father. Please make sure that every word that I speak is a word that is spoken directly from the Holy Spirit and not from my own abilities or from my own mind or my own heart, but that your words are used right now today on this message so that your words may be heard right now today on this message. I thank you, Father, and I give you all the glory in Jesus' name and all people, all God's people said amen and amen. So our message today is God is our ultimate cardiologist because he's the only heart surgeon that we need to have ever in life. Um, he's the one that mends us when we're brokenhearted. Notice I don't say if we're brokenhearted, I say when we're brokenhearted because we all experience a broken heart at some point in time in our life, unfortunately. It's bound to happen. So let's look at a broken heart and what a broken heart is. Let's look at the definition for a second. A broken heart, the definition states, is also known as heartbreak. It's a metaphor for the extreme emotional and physical distress caused by the pain one feels at experience longing for someone or a situation. Did you know that medically a broken heart can actually be quite serious? Did, you, did anybody ever tell you that before? That actually a broken heart can mimic a heart attack? that it can be that serious, that stressful to your emotional well-being, that it can actually mimic a heart attack. It's called the Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. And basically what that means, and I'm going to read you the definition, is that it's a medical name for a syndrome that can be caused by heartbreak. Or more accurately, the stress of a heartbreaking situation. Acute emotional stress, positive or negative, can cause the left ventricle of the heart to be stunned or paralyzed, causing heart attack-like symptoms, including strong chest, arm or shoulder pain, shortness of breath, dizziness, loss of consciousness, nausea, and vomiting. Now, I truly believe and I'm not going to get too far into it today, but I truly believe that I personally have experienced this in my own life. Um, there was a time not too long ago that I went to the hospital with pain coming down my arm for several hours, um, and I literally needed to have paddles placed on me within about 15 minutes of being in the emergency room, and they couldn't figure out why my heart stopped. Well, I had been previously going through a very stressful circumstance, a very broken hearted type situation. And so while preparing for this message and sermon today, I realized that I believe, and I believe that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit has shown me that this taco subo cardiomyopathy is something I personally experienced in my own life, where everything that happens to your body mimics a heart attack. And yet, once your heart's beating again and everything's fine, they don't understand what caused it. So it was emotional distress. It was a broken heart that can do something like that. So it can actually be quite serious. The good news is the condition doesn't usually cause permanent damage. And in my situation, they said my heart was as strong as an ox afterwards. A few days after the circumstance happened and 
you know, I was more shaken than anything. Um, after it occurred, the cardiologist had said, the physical doctor said that my heart was as strong as ever and that he couldn't find anything wrong with my heart. Nothing physically wrong with my ventricles, nothing physically wrong with my arteries. There was no understanding as to what caused this problem. But see, I know how stressed out that I was prior to this happening. I know what was in my heart. I know the pain and suffering that I have been going through emotionally. So although I don't have a diagnosis that it was this cardiomyopathy, I truly believe that that's what caused my issue. So I have experienced a broken heart right down to a flat line. So I completely understand what it feels like to be brokenhearted. It's very stressful to experience a broken heart. But in Psalms 34, 18, it says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Our Father knows how crushing it is in spirit. He placed those words specifically in the psalm. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He calls them wounds in Psalm 147.3. He calls them wounds and says he binds up their wounds because he knows those wounds are raw and bleeding when you're brokenhearted. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted again, bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners in Isaiah, Isaiah 61 1. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. God will not despise. In Psalm 51, 17. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14, 27. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest on me. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Matthew 11, 28, 30. And verse 4 reads, Do not be afraid. You won't be put to shame. Verse 4 in Isaiah 54. You won't be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace, for you will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widow widowhood. You will remember no more. See, God is the only physician who can fully heal your broken heart. And he's never failed in his ability to heal you. Worship can put our pain in its right, rightful place. Worshiping the Lord puts our pain in its rightful place under the reign of an already victorious father. Not above the father, but under his reign. Feeling brokenhearted is a real emotion, most often felt with a loss of something or someone. And if you've ever experienced a serious broken heart, then you already know how badly it feels. There are times you can't breathe, you can't sleep, you can't eat, you can't think. You will sometimes recluse yourself into a circumstance or situation in which you don't want to see anyone or talk to anyone. And as I was preparing for this message and I was reflecting on brokenheartedness and I was trying to, you know, really zero in on 
either people in the Bible or circumstances in the Bible that I felt best described the worst, the, the absolute epitome, the, the pit of a broken heart. What I realized is that I can't personally imagine more heartbreak than the Mother Mary must have felt. The day she experienced her son being beaten, savagely, heinously treated, the entire way up to Calvary, and then including into the crucifixion and the suffering our, our, our Jesus felt and experienced. But see, I can't personally imagine as a mother the brokenness that our mother Mary must have felt as that was happening and unfolding to her son. And not just her son, but her Messiah her beautiful and perfect son and her beautiful and perfect Messiah. And as bad as my heartbreak has been in my life, it completely pales in comparison to how heartbroken she must have felt. Knowing that Jesus was fulfilling his destiny and watching God's plan unfold, but at the same time, painfully watching your son, who was all God and all man at the same time, suffer so unspeakably and not being able to do anything, being helpless to stop it or to stand in the way of what our son was experiencing. And nothing quite can ever ever match up or break a mother's heart faster than something that has happened to our child. Nothing can cripple us moms faster to our knees than a circumstance or a situation in which harms or hurts or places our child in a dangerous circumstance or situation. God in his infinite wisdom and love gave, gave enmity to the women and the evil one in Genesis. In doing so, he ensured that women would always love, care, and protect their children from anything and everything harmful and evil for all of life and eternity on earth and in heaven, I believe. But how did Mary get through this? How did she get through this? How did she not fall? How did her physical body, her physical humanity, not fall into total despair, into a reclusiveness where no one could drag her out after Jesus was crucified? How did God ensure that he would make sure and maintain her during her brokenness? Well, first, I'd like to point out that Jesus ensured she had a support system here on earth. He entrusted his mother to not only to, to all the disciples, but specifically Apostle John. When Jesus was on the cross, both the Apostle John and Mary, the mother of Jesus, stood nearby him. And in John 19, 26 and 27, we read it that when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, because he loved John very much, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple John, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. And the clear understanding of this passage is that Jesus on the cross before he went, he, he, he passed was that he commanded John to care for Mary after his death. And he entrobed them together that John would now be her son and she, his mother. Jesus planned ahead for Mary's heart surgery. 
He knew that she would need love and support and care here on earth. And he knew that John would also need love, support, and care here on earth. And that they would be able to rely on each other and support one another through love and prayer, through Jesus. So that first was his first step that he, he entroped them together, gave them to each other, specifically saying that while on the cross, showing how important it was that they were connected now for the rest of their lives as mother and son. And further, Jesus' resurrection obviously would have surely had his mother, a heartbroken woman, rejoicing that he beat the cross, that he claimed his victory over death. You are mourning the death of your beloved son and your beloved Messiah, but then you realize that three days after he died, that God rose him from the dead. And that he gave, by doing that, humanity everlasting life. That was something for her to then rejoice. And as much as it was painful, that we can't even imagine how painful it was for her to watch Jesus die in that heinous way. And as heartbroken as Mary must have been in those moments, in the moments after. That there must have been very much a part of her that was thankful that he was her son, thankful to the father that he entrusted the Messiah to her to raise, that she got to experience this, that he had chosen her to love and raise up Jesus and to be able to experience not only the love of a mother and a son, but to experience being the mother of the Messiah the true living God in human form. And as a last point, I would like to see that God knew exactly who he was choosing when he chose the Virgin Mary to be the vessel for Jesus. He knew her character. He knew her heart. He knew her faith. He knew her love. He knew exactly who she was and who she someday would be. The mother that she would be for Jesus. The care, the protection, and the love that she would have provided for him through up into his 30s. God knew who Mary was before she even experienced this level of heartbreak. He wasn't surprised. He's never surprised. And I'd like to tell you that he knows you as well. He knows you in your current circumstance, and he will know you during your heartbreak, and he will know you after your heartbreak. He knew you before your heart was broken. In fact, he knew you before your heart was formed. And he knows you currently. He knows what your heart's condition is from the inside out because he's currently living inside of you. So he isn't just the most amazing cardiologist in which can use tools and doctor, you know, scans to see your condition of your heart. He legitimately sees your heart from the inside out. He legitimately can hug your heart from the inside out. Amen, praise God. He's inside. So he's looking at the condition of your heart at all times. He is processing that and ensuring that he is providing you comfort for that broken heart at all times from the inside out. And I can sit here today in front of you and I can tell you that heartbreak gets better, that I'm living proof that heartbreak gets better. Because indeed, it does get better. It does. Eventually, everything always gets better. But when you're in the middle of a heartbreak, it can feel like your days melt together, that you're never going to feel better. 
And what I say to you is lean in to God. Lean on God. Let God hug your heart from the inside out. Because like Mary, he already knew who you were, who your character was, exactly what your heart looked like from the inside of you. He was there when your heart was built, and he knows what your heart is built to withstand. And so when you feel like you can't withstand it any longer, he's inside hugging you, comforting you, and proving to you that your heart is the heart of Christ and that you can not just withstand your heartbreak, but that you can overcome and that you have already served victory to that heartbreak in Jesus' name. Lean on God's understanding and love, not your own understanding and love. Read your word every day, as many times a day as you possibly can. You pray throughout your day. You begin your day with prayer. You go through your middle of your day with prayer. You end your day with prayer. You be careful what you allow in here, what you allow in here, what you say out of here, and make sure you're doing this all throughout your day. You listen. And you believe, you believe. Call on your prayerful friends to help you through it. Care, call on your mentors and your sponsors and your ministers and your, your prayerful friends. Call on them. They are there to support you, just like the disciple John was there to support Mary and how Mary was there to support John. God is the only cardiologist that you will ever need through your heartbreak. And I promise you that even though your heartbreak wasn't his plan, know that it wasn't God's plan for you to be heartbroken. And even though it wasn't his plan, he will use it for his good. He will guide you through it. He will be there for you. He will be there through it, and he will be there on the other side with you, walking through to the other side, because God always brings you through whole. He never brings you through halfway. He brings you through whole. So friends, I ask you, if this message has helped you today, if it's touched your heart, if it's helped you to remember that brokenness and brokenheartedness is not something that isn't going to happen. It's going to happen, but that when it does, that God is there for you. And these scriptures, you need to lean on these scriptures, lean on God's love and understanding. If this has touched your heart today, I would ask you to ask God what to give to our ministry. Because your tithes and offerings allow us to continue to spread the gospel to, to all that need to hear it. And that it allows us to continue to harvest souls to God's kingdom, amen, which is our biggest important role here on earth. If you feel led by the Spirit to give, I would ask that you go to Cash App and you're able to give to our minister through dollar sign G Him Offering, dollar sign G H I M O F F E R I N G, G Him, dollar sign G Him Offering. Obviously, we pray so many blessings over you, and we also pray that everything you tithe and offer to our ministry, that it comes back a hundredfold return to you in your household, that your seed that you sow so generously to God's kingdom into our ministry will be blessed in Jesus' name. We at GHIM never like to end a message without giving you the ability, if you're not currently saved, to come to the Father and get your salvation for yourself today. We'd like you to make that decision today to settle your account with our Father, for you to come to the cross and for you to give your life to the Father and to experience salvation, to experience the Father hugging your heart from the inside out by way of the Holy Spirit that comes to live inside of you. 
And if you would like to do that today and dedicate your life to the Lord, I'd ask that you raise your hands right now with your show of faith. It is a show of faith, just like an altar call. So please raise your hands in a show of faith. And I'd like you to repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I have made mistakes. I am a sinner. Father, I am so sorry for my sin. And I ask that you forgive my sins and have mercy on me today. I declare with my mouth that Jesus, your son, is my Lord and Savior. I declare with my mouth, Father, that he died on the cross for me and three days later rose from the dead. Come into my heart, Lord, and make me completely new. Guide my life, Lord, and help me to carry out your perfect will. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. I give you all my praise and glorify your holy name, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Congratulations. If you've prayed that prayer, we believe that you took your salvation today. You received your salvation from the Father today. And you are now a new person in Christ. You are a new human in Christ. You are a new spirit in Christ. And we welcome you to God's kingdom. What we would ask you to do is to please message us and let us know you've been saved because there is new material that we want to send to you to help you in your journey. And we also want you to message us so that we can pray for you personally so that you are set off on a journey in a good Bible study type way. We can help you find a church if you need to. We can support you and help you. And we're just so happy you've made that decision today. This today will be the very, very best decision you've ever made. Today is, and it marks, the last second chance and the best second chance you will ever need in your life. So amen. We're so proud of you. We're so proud to call you into the kingdom with the rest of us, brothers and sisters. Father God, I'd like to pray for all of our viewers today. If you bow your head, I'll pray for you. Father God, mend the hearts of our brothers and sisters. Mend their hearts from the inside out, Father. Hug their heart from the inside out. I thank you, Father, you are their comforter, that you are their savior. I thank you, Father, that you walk with us wherever we go, wherever they go, you never leave them. I thank you, Father, that you are with them always because you live inside of them, Father. Thank you, Father, for loving them. Thank you for blessing them. Thank you for being a promise keeping prayer, answering truthful, faithful God. Thank you, Father, for hugging their heart. Thank you for comforting them through this brokenheartedness. And thank you, Father, for touching them today on this broadcast. In Jesus' name, we thank you. And all God's people said amen and amen. I hope you have a beautiful week this week. I hope you have, and I know I say this every week and I mean it every week, I hope you have the best blessed week you've ever had. And that if today you're experiencing brokenheartedness, that immediately after this broadcast, that you will feel uplifted by our Father and that you will start to come out of that brokenheartedness because you're leaning on Jesus. We love you so much. More importantly, Jesus loves you so much. We thank you for watching. We thank you for supporting our ministry. And most importantly, we thank you for loving God. And we thank you for putting God first in your life. Don't ever forget that the righteous are bold as lions. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting our ministry. I love you. Jehim loves you. We're praying for you. And we're going to see you next time. Thanks so much. We love.